Can someone explain to me how the police officers in Canada can understand this, but people in America can't? City councilor is calling for a national hand drive. Uh, just get your thoughts? I can tell you that the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police have indicated that that won't make any difference. When we seize handguns, the handguns are always almost 100 percent in the possession of people who have no legal right to possess them. They're almost always stolen or illegally obtained. I simply don't see as a 27 year veteran how adding another layer of law will make any difference anywhere in this country. When we stop somebody in this city and police do this every single day and they have a handgun, somehow saying that this jurisdiction, that Winnipeg is handgun free, and I'll use air quotes, is going to make it safer or easy for us is just nonsense. It won't make any difference whatsoever. Somebody saying, well, it's illegal to have that gun in Winnipeg is just another layer of I, and I guess it might make some people feel good, but it will not change the threat level one iota. If you want guns, you're going to be able to get handguns. And saying somehow that they shouldn't be legal, and, 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 the, and, the, and the discussions are, uh, from what I understand, that they should be illegal in certain jurisdictions. So I legally own a gun in, um, you know, Il Deschain, and it gets stolen, it gets brought into Winnipeg, the current laws deal with all of that very effectively. And having some jurisdictional law in a particular area, and, and I can tell you this in terms of all of my colleagues who own guns as part of our job as law enforcement and investigate gun issues every day, the people at the forefront of that just shrug their shoulders and go, I guess if it makes someone somewhere think that they're doing something, that's great. But that's not what's going to happen. It will not change one thing. Thing. Keep in mind, he said this in 2020. Fast forward to 2022, and Canada's leaders have now banned the sale of handguns in the country. We're simply saying uh, that we are uh, freezing the market, and in the future, it'll not be possible to buy, sell, transfer, or import handguns in Canada. People need to understand that the only way to prevent criminals from getting guns is to make all guns disappear. Anyone with a brain knows that this is impossible, but people keep thinking that if they make legal gun ownership hard, it'll also make illegal gun ownership hard. But this is stupid because criminals don't get their guns legally. Law-abiding citizens do, and they're not the ones shooting at people. This is like removing the teeth of sheep because a wolf is using his teeth to kill sheep. The wolf still has its teeth, and the sheep are now even more defenseless than they were before. This is moronic, if not desperately comical. The criminals are laughing at us because we're too short-sighted to see this. In 2019, the U.S. Department of Justice put out a special report where they surveyed over 200,000 prisoners who had a gun during their offense. Anyone want to take a guess what percentage of prisoners bought their gun from a licensed dealer? Seven. That's right, seven percent. How is a universal background check going to prevent criminals from getting guns if they're not even getting their guns from dealers? The 7% that obviously do didn't have criminal records before purchasing the gun because if you buy a gun from a dealer, you have to have a background check before you can take possession of that gun. That same report found that 43% of criminals got their guns off the street or from underground markets. People always talk about UK gun laws, but the criminals are still able to get guns there exactly the same way, illegally. Sky News can reveal the National Crime Agency has noted an alarming increase in firearms on our streets. In the last 10 months alone, they've already seized 425 guns, so the quantity has quadrupled in three years. Would you say there are more than ever before? It feels that there's more than ever before, and if you look at the statistics that we've got, the seizures are on the increase. Um, yes, that means we're being more successful at, at obtaining them, but also it could indicate that there's more available. Oh, and don't get me started on how much the anti-gun lobby just drools over the gun control laws in Australia. Criminals still get their guns there too, illegally. There is a scary number of illegal guns in Australia. Before I show you, how many illegal guns do you think there are in Australia? Five, 10, 20,000, 50,000? Try 260,000 illegal guns in Australia. If the police are telling you these gun laws don't work and they're on the ground level seeing this stuff play out every day, 
Why would you listen to a slick haired politician who surrounds himself with guns for his protection and let him sell you on giving up your rights to own a gun for your protection? Stop thinking like ruled over people and start thinking like free people with a brain. If these gun control laws are so effective, why aren't the politicians banning their security from having AR-15s? Why aren't they banning their security from having more than 10 rounds in their guns? They aren't doing any of this because a government's natural tendency is to monopolize power and violence, not share it with the people. It's not about criminals having guns. It's about you having guns. It's about respect. A government respects the demands of an armed population exceedingly more than an unarmed population. What's an unarmed population going to do? Protest and throw rocks? However, an armed population, they have to be careful with because they know if they go too far, things might get out of hand real fast. Look what happened during COVID. Other countries were shut down with an iron fist. Here in America, they had to tiptoe with our lockdowns. Think about where the most strict lockdowns took place, though. They were all generally states with really strict gun control laws. Can't say the same for places like Texas. When the people are armed, the government negotiates with its people. However, when the people are unarmed, the government tells their people what to do. You know, we talk a lot about empowerment in this country, except for when it comes to the Second Amendment. However, I can't think of anything more empowering than having the most effective tool to protect you and your family. So help me spread this message by liking and sharing this video with everyone you know. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment because the Second Amendment, when it said militia, it wasn't talking about the government. It was talking about you. Also, if you want to know where to find the I'm the Militia shirt and merchandise, click the I'm the Militia link in the description section of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, make sure you hit that bell symbol.